Hey everyone, this is part two of the related rates homework. Um, I left off on number six, and I left with the I left you with the answer to part B. So we figured out that uh, d a d t is equal to uh, we did one half d x d t times y plus d y d t times x. So first of all, we had to write that a was equal to one half x y, right? One half base times height. Remember, we had a triangle. We have a triangle, and it's a ladder. It's supposed to represent a ladder that's sliding off a wall. So the base is going this way, the height is going this way. Um, this point here represents y. This point here represents x, and then the speed at the, that they're moving are dx and dy. You can rewatch the previous video if you need all the, the details. But we were at this point here and we were figuring it out. And we had figured all these out from, uh, from part A. And we end up with negative 178.5. All right, part C. So it's asking you to figure out the angle or the rate at which the angle is, uh, is changing. So if you're solving for an angle out of a triangle, uh, I mean in this class, you're basically going to be using an arc function or an inverse trig function. So, But you want to be clever about which one you pick. So we know a lot about this triangle. Let's say we know this is 13. We figured out that this was 12. This side of the triangle was 12. And then we figured out that this side of the triangle was 5. Okay? So, what is the right inverse function to pick? Remember, we have arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. And what you're going to do is you're going to put in the definition of you know the trig function. Like, for example, um, Arc cosine is opposite over, I'm sorry, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I would put the adjacent side, which is 12, and then divide by 13. That would go in there, and that would give, whoops, arc cosine of this. Sorry, I'm not writing clearly here. Arc cosine of this. So theta equals arc cosine of 12 divided by 13. Okay? And that would give me the angle, but remember, I'm looking for a rate of change of the angle. So let's say that I used arc tangent, because you can pick any one and it would work, but I'm, I'm trying to teach you to think ahead and to be clever about how you go about these problems or else you end up doing a lot of work. So arc tangent, well, what goes inside the parentheses? The defini definition of tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? So I'm going to put in y over x. Don't, don't put in the numbers. Put in the, the variables, because we have to take the derivative of this. If I did that, and I took the derivative of this, why was that not a good idea? Well, again, you might get the right answer if you did all the work right, but it's a lot of work because you're going to have to do a chain rule, because it's arctangent, right? And you use the formula, you couldn't even call u y over x, but both of these are changing with respect to time. So you're going to have to do a quotient rule inside of this chain rule, and it becomes a big hairy mess, right? So. Um, the definition of arctangent is um, u prime, the, or, sorry, d d x of arctan is equal to u prime over 1 plus u squared. Okay? So this u prime would have to be a quotient rule. All right? So, um, Anyways, if, if you don't get it, you can ask me in class, but I'm just really making the point. Be careful about when you have several options like that, what, what you're thinking out so that you don't give yourself a lot of work. I'm going to go ahead and use arc sine, okay? It could be either arc sine or arc cosine. I think it'll be the same amount of work. So arc sine of, and then arc sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be y over s. Okay. Now this I want to take the derivative of. The nice thing is, is that if I remember this problem, s is not changing because s represents the length of the ladder. So that's why it's 
this is the better one to pick. I don't have to do, deal with two variables of, uh, of t. So d d t, d d t, and this becomes uh, d theta d t is equal to, and then this is my u. So u prime, the, uh, the formula for arc sine is um, u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared, right? So u prime is just going to be dy dt over s, which is a constant 13. Again, if you're if you're having trouble following my concepts, you know you can ask me. But I picked this because this is this side is not changing with when, as time passes, and so I, it's a very easy derivative. So that's my derivative dy dt over 13. Okay, so let's plug it in. U prime is this dy dt over 13 over the square root of 1 minus y over s squared. Okay, so now plug everything in. It looks a lot worse than it is. Um, dy dt uh, turned out to be negative 36. So this is negative 36 over 13 over the square root of 1 minus y, which is 5 over 13 squared. Okay? So this is, um, this all ends up being, if you simplify it, negative 3. I mean, you can do the plugging in and, and figuring out, but, so, uh, the important po part is take the derivative, use arc sine and take der the derivative of that and realize that this this is really, if you want to start it out, it'll, it'll be y over 13. You don't have to write the s. It's y over 13 because the s isn't changing. Okay? All right. Number I think that numbers 7 and 8 are very similar to numbers um, what is it? Yeah, numbers 4 and 3. Numbers 3 and 4. They're, they're, one is about a triangle where the distance is increasing, and the other is about a, a, a sphere. So you can look at 3 and 4 at the, at the video that I did for that, and, and it should be very similar. You might have to solve for something else, but it's the calculus is the same. All right, now number uh, nine. says the coordinates of a particle in the metric xy plane are differentiable functions with time t da 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 da. All right, it it again it looks worse than it is. It's just the wording. So let's write down what they give us. Number 9. They tell us that dx dt is equal to -8 and dy dt is equal to -4. How fast is the particle's distance? That's the word. How fast is the particle's distance? So that means the rate of change of the distance. So I write down the distance formula. d squared is equal to the square root of. Now, what goes in here, it's x minus x naught squared, y minus y naught. But I have to write the distance formula for this problem. So they said, how fast is the particle's distance from the origin. That means my distance formula is going to be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared because the origin, um, the distance from the origin is what I care about. So that's nice of them. They just said, okay, now you just got to do x squared plus y squared. Okay, I'm going to take the derivative of this thing with respect to time. And then the point um, is going to be basically x equals 12 and y equals 9 for my problem. They give you a point at the end and just use the, the x and y coordinates for your x and y. So I'm looking for d, d, dt. Right? Well, this is actually, now that we're at this point, we have everything written, this is very straightforward. Take the derivative of both sides. Whoops, this is not true. Sorry, there's no square root there because I have both sides squared. So the distance formula it has the square root, but if then it, you square both sides, it's just d, uh, 
It's just d squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. I hope that doesn't confuse. I shouldn't have written that square root. I wrote the formula down wrong. You want to write it like this because this is easier to take the derivative this way than to have the square root there. Again, it, how you write it can really change everything. So d dt, d dt. All right, so I get chain rule, 2d, d, capital D dt, equals 2x dx dt, plus 2y dy dt. And we have everything, right? Uh, except this d right here, okay. So d, but we are given x and y, so d is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 9 squared, which is um, 15. So now we have 30, I keep switching colors, uh, 30 dd dt is equal to 2 times 12 is 24 dx dt plus 2 times 9 is 18 dy dt. And why didn't I fill in the dx and dy? I don't know. 24 times negative 8 plus 18 times negative 4. Okay? And then divide all that by 30, and I have d, 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 t. So I end up with, in my problem, I got negative 44 over 5. Let's make sure I'm not crazy. Um... Divide by 30. Yeah, so negative 44 over 5. Okay? That's 9. That was actually not too bad, but you had to think a little bit about which formula to use. They're only giving you words, they're not giving you a picture, but write down the distance formula. Again, the distance formula for this problem, meaning, meaning you can fill in the x0 and the y0, because typically the distance formula has this, right? But you have to fill it in first. Then you're going to take the derivative of of this thing. Okay. Number 10. Um, a lot of words, the, the big issue that we need to get over is being intimidated by, by words because once you can extract what you need out of the word problem, the, the, the math is not that bad. So um, V equals IR. This is Ohm's law. Um, if you want to know any meaning behind it, voltage, uh, well, current is, is the rate at which the electrons are actually moving through the wire. Resistance is the ability of something to um, extract energy out of the electrons, I guess, like a light bulb. Um, you know, a higher wattage light bulb is, is going to have a higher resistance. It's going to give off maybe more heat. Um, I might not have it perfectly said there, but... And then uh, voltage is... <clears throat> voltage is a little harder to explain. But this is used in electronics, so it's called Ohm's Law. So V equals IR. Okay, now it says suppose that V is increasing at a rate of 2 volts per second, so dV dt is equal to 2 volts per second. You know it's a rate because they give you the per second. dI dt is decreasing. Decreasing means a negative sign. One-fifth amp per second. All right, let uh, answer the following questions. So the first two are very straightforward. What is the value of dv dt? It's 2. Whoops, it's 2. What's the value of di dt for me? Negative 1 fifth. So just seeing if you understand the symbols and, and how to get the information out. Now here comes a challenging one. Um, what is the value, what equation relates dr to dv dt and di dt? So they want you to figure out... Um, what dr dt is from this. All right. So the way I would do it is to realize that all of these are going to depend on time. So that means you're going to have to do a product rule here because I have two things that are depending on time. R is not constant, I is not constant. All right. So let's go ahead and take that derivative. Then we're going to get dv dt is equal to all right, this is my u, my v, so u prime is di dt times r. v prime is dr dt times i. 
oh, okay. What is the question asking for? It's asking for dr dt. So I need to solve, I need to get by itself the dr dt. So subtract or subtract this over to the other side. Do that first. That whole term. Subtract this whole term over to the other side. And I get dr dt is equal to dv dt minus di dt times r. And there's an i here in the front. Now divide away the i. So dr dt is equal to 1 over i times dv dt minus um, r di dt. All right. Now this gets, they're, they're being a little bit mean again in this problem because this doesn't look like anything <laughs> answers. So what, what did they do? Well, um, they're, they're trying to set you up for the fact that y you, you only have um, V and R, uh, I'm sorry, V and I in the next part of the problem. So you have to realize that since V is equal to I R, then R is equal to I, I'm sorry, V over I. So if I put that there, then I have what they have. 1 over I times dV dt minus V over I times dI dt. Okay? So that, for me, that was A. How mean of them. All right. So find the rate at which um, R is changing when V equals 40 and I equals 4. Um, now you're just plugging in. So V equals 40, so this is 40, I equals 4, dV dt is 2, and then this is negative 1 fifth. And then this is, uh, the I is 4. So I end up with 1 fourth, 2 minus 40 over 4 is 10, times negative 1 fifth is equal to 1 fourth times 2 minus, or 2 plus 5, 2 plus, how about 2, yeah. equals 1. All right, so I got one. All right, uh, is R increasing or decreasing? Well, look at the sign. So this, again, this is dr dt. So the rate of change of the resistance is one ohm per whatever, one ohm per second. But it's increasing because this is positive. So that's the last part. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave you to really try 7 and 8 on your own now that I've done very similar problems. Again, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 are, are very similar. So I'll see you guys on Thursday.